Welcome to Australia Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Nauru's geopolitical clout. China eyes defense ties reboot with Australia despite Taiwan tensions. Say it to my face, Djokovic lifts after confrontation with Fan to overcome brave Popperin. Sumit Nagel has made history for India at the Australian Open. So too has his next opponent, Shang Junqing, for China. Sports on TV for Thursday, January 18th. Nauru's geopolitical clout. Diplomat. The small Pacific island nation of Nauru has gained significant geopolitical influence in recent years due to its strategic positioning and involvement in various global issues. Nauru recently switched its allegiance from Taiwan to China, reducing the number of countries that recognize Taiwan to 12. This move has been attributed to Australia's decision to end funding for Nauru's controversial immigration detention center, which has caused political tension between the two countries. Nauru's switch to recognizing China has also prompted calls for Australia to negotiate an agreement similar to the one recently made with Tuvalu, which allows for Tuvaluans to move to Australia in exchange for security agreements. Furthermore, Nauru has gained regional influence through the appointment of its former Prime Minister as Secretary-General of the Pacific Islands Forum, PIF, and its push for the regulation of deep-sea mining through the UN International Seabed Authority, ISA. Overall, Nauru's geopolitical clout has increased due to its involvement in Pacific tensions, deep-sea mining, and Australia's domestic politics. China eyes defense ties reboot with Australia despite Taiwan tensions. Nikkei Asia China's ambassador to Australia, Xiao Qian, has called for the two countries to resume defense ties that were halted last year. Xiao expressed the need for trust between the two militaries, stating that without trust in defense, there is no real trust overall. He also addressed concerns about Nauru cutting diplomatic ties with Taiwan for China and pointed a finger at Japan over a naval incident in which Australian divers were injured. Zhao's comments come as Australia strikes a deal with Lockheed Martin to produce guided missiles, seen as a counterbalance to China's growing clout in the Indo-Pacific region. Say it to my face, Djokovic lifts after confrontation with Fan to overcome brave Popperin. ABC. Novak Djokovic extended his winning streak at the Australian Open to 30 matches after defeating Alexei Popperin in a tense four-set battle. Djokovic was pushed by the 24-year-old from Sydney, surviving several scares in the three-hour match. The turning point came when Djokovic had a brief exchange with a fan, which seemed to spark him and led to him winning four of the next five games. Djokovic needed just one break of serve to win the first set but Popperin grew into the contest and squared the match in the second set. Popperin had chances to win the third set but Djokovic had an answer every time and eventually won the set in a tiebreaker. Djokovic will now face Argentine Tomas Martin Echeverry in the third round. Summit Nagel has made history for India at the Australian Open. So too has his next opponent, Shang Junqing, for China. CNN. Indian tennis player Sumit Nagel has become the first Indian man in 11 years to win a match at the Australian Open, defeating Kazakhstan's Alexander Bublik and earning $118,000 in prize money. Nagel, who has a career-high ranking of 122 in the world, wants to see more Indian players competing in singles at the top of the sport. China's Shang Junqing, the first male player from China to win a singles match at the Australian Open in the Open era, is Nagel's next opponent. Neither player has ever reached the third round of a Grand Slam. Sports on TV for Thursday, January 18. Associated Press. The article provides a schedule of various sports events happening on January 18. It includes college basketball games, women's college basketball games, field hockey, golf tournaments, NBA basketball games, soccer matches, and tennis matches. Some notable events include the college basketball game between New Mexico and Utah State, the LPGA Tour Tournament of Champions, the NBA game between Chicago and Toronto, and the Australian Open Tennis Tournament. The schedule is subject to change. Novak Djokovic struggles past home favorite Alexei Popperin to reach Australian Open third round. CNN. Novak Djokovic reached the Australian Open third round, beating Alexei Popperin in four sets. The top seed wasn't at his best, but was able to take control of the match in the second half. Djokovic saved four set points in the third set, which would have given Popperin the lead. Djokovic will face Argentina's 30th seed Tomas Martín Echeverri in the next round. Meanwhile, Coco Goff beat Caroline Dolhide 7-6, 2-6-2 to set up an All-American clash against Alicia Parks in the third round. Haas to field a female teenager racer from Indiana in F1 Academy Series. Associated Press. Haas F1 team has announced that 19-year-old Chloe Chambers will represent the team as the first American racer in their history. 
Chambers will compete in the F1 Academy Series with Campos Racing and will be fully integrated with the Haas team. She has previously competed in karting and various single-seater series, and holds the Guinness World Record for the fastest vehicle slalom. Haas has not fielded an American driver since its debut in 2016. Chambers' hiring was praised by Ayo Komatsu, the new team principal at Haas. Djokovic survives but faces race against time at Australian Open. The Independent. Novak Djokovic admitted he was not at his best during his second-round victory over Alexei Popperin at the Australian Open. Djokovic, the defending champion, had to save four set points in the third set to eventually win 6-3-4 to 6-7 to 6-6 to 3. During the match, Djokovic was unhappy with the crowd, who were backing Popperin, and complained to the umpire about a heckler. Djokovic said he hoped that the incident would shake him up and allow him to find the intensity that he needed. He also admitted that he was not feeling 100% and that he had been affected by illness and injury, which had forced him to retire from the ADP Cup. However, Djokovic said that he was not overly concerned about his struggles and that he expected to improve as the tournament progressed. The world number one will face Tomas Martin Echeverry in the next round. Deadly fire ants form flood rafts to spread across Australia. Telegraph. Fire ants in Australia are using floods to colonize new territory, according to experts. The invasive species, originally from South America, is one of the most dangerous ever introduced to Australia. They pose a serious threat to native wildlife and agriculture, and can kill humans with their sting. Until now, they had been confined to southeastern Queensland and a small area of New South Wales. However, recent heavy rain and flooding along Australia's eastern seaboard has enabled them to expand their range. There are now concerns they could move south and further expand their populations in New South Wales. India wins toss and opts to bat first against Afghanistan in third and final T20. Associated Press. India won the toss and elected to bat first in the third and final 2020 international against Afghanistan. India has already clinched the series with wins in the first two matches. This is India's final T20 match before the T20 World Cup, which will be held in the West Indies and the United States in June. Both teams made several changes to their lineups for the match. Afghanistan brought in four players as part of wholesale changes to its bowling lineup. The match is being played at the M. Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bengaluru, known for its short boundaries and due in the evening, which typically favors teams chasing. Six Nations 2024, fixtures, squads, how to get tickets and more. Yahoo! France face Ireland in the opening match of the 2024 Six Nations on February 2 at the Orange Velodrome in Marseille. England's campaign begins the following day against Italy in Rome. The English squad is made up of 36 players, including the uncapped Aaron Reid. The Welsh squad includes five uncapped players, and Warren Gatland has named Daffod Jenkins as captain. Scotland are yet to name their captain. Emmanuel Mayafo, a New Zealand-born forward for Toulouse, is among six uncapped players in Fabian Gauthier's French squad. Italy have included South African-born back rower Ross Vincent. Ireland's full squad is set to be announced on January 17, however, Mac Hansen has already been ruled out with a dislocated shoulder. France and Ireland are the bookies' favourites to win the tournament, followed by England. British tennis writer Mike Dixon dies in Melbourne while covering the Australian Open. Associated Press. British tennis writer Mike Dixon has passed away at the age of 59 while covering the Australian Open in Melbourne. His death was confirmed by the Daily Mail the British newspaper where Dixon had worked since 1990. Dixon's family announced his passing in a joint message, stating that he had collapsed and died while in Melbourne. Dixon had covered a wide range of sports in his career, including cricket, and was described as a giant of a journalist by Lee Clayton, the Daily Mail's global publisher for sport. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Sixth Dimension. Today, we have a diverse range of news to discuss, from geopolitics to sports. So let's dive right in. First, we talked about Nauru's rising geopolitical influence. This small Pacific island nation has been gaining attention due to its strategic positioning and involvement in global issues. Its switch from recognizing Taiwan to China has caused political tension between Nauru and Australia, prompting calls for negotiations. Furthermore, Nauru has gained regional influence through key appointments and its push for deep-sea mining regulations. It's fascinating to see how a tiny nation can have such an impact on the global stage. Moving on, we discuss China's call to reboot defense ties with Australia. Despite tensions over Taiwan, China's ambassador emphasized the need for trust between the two militaries. This comes as Australia strengthens its defense capabilities with a deal to produce guided missiles. 
it's clear that both countries are trying to assert their influence in the Indo-Pacific region, and defense ties play a crucial role in this game. In the world of sports, we witnessed Novak Djokovic's victory at the Australian Open. The world number one faced a tough battle against Alexei Popperin but managed to come out on top. Djokovic's brief exchange with a fan seemed to spark him and led to his victory. It just goes to show that sometimes a little confrontation can be motivating. Speaking of the Australian Open, we also saw history being made by Indian player Sumit Nagel and Chinese player Shang Junqing. Nagel became the first Indian man in 11 years to win a match at the tournament, while Shang Junqing became the first male player from China to win a singles match in the Open era. It's exciting to see new faces emerging in the world of tennis. Moving on to other sports, we had a schedule of various events happening on January 18th. From college basketball to golf tournaments, there was something for everyone. It's always great to have a wide range of sports to enjoy, and it's a reminder that sports can bring people together. In the world of Formula One, Haas F1 team has announced the hiring of Chloe Chambers, a 19-year-old racer from Indiana. Chambers will be the first American driver in the team's history and will compete in the F1 Academy Series. It's fantastic to see more diversity in motorsports, and I'm sure Chambers will bring a fresh perspective to the team. Moving back to the Australian Open, Novak Djokovic admitted that he wasn't at his best during his second-round victory. He had to save four set points to secure the win. However, Djokovic remains confident that he will improve as the tournament progresses. It just goes to show that even the best athletes have their off days. In other news, fire ants in Australia are causing concern as they use floods to colonize new territory. These invasive ants pose a threat to native wildlife and agriculture, and recent flooding has enabled them to expand their range. It's a reminder of the impact that invasive species can have on ecosystems. In cricket news, India won the toss and elected to bat first in their final 2020 international against Afghanistan. Both teams made several changes to their lineups, and this match serves as preparation for the upcoming T20 World Cup. It will be interesting to see how these teams perform ahead of the tournament. We also got a glimpse of the upcoming Six Nations rugby tournament, with France facing Ireland in the opening match. The squads are taking shape, and there's excitement in the air as teams prepare for the competition. It promises to be an exciting tournament, with France and Ireland emerging as the bookies' favourites. Lastly, we received sad news from the Australian Open, as British tennis writer Mike Dixon passed away while covering the tournament. Dixon was a respected journalist who had covered a wide range of sports throughout his career. His death is a loss to the sporting community, and our thoughts are with his family. That wraps up our news for today. It's been an eventful day, with geopolitical shifts, sporting triumphs, and sad farewells. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on these topics. So, please, join the discussion and let me know what you think. What are your thoughts on Nauru's rising influence? How do you think the defense ties between China and Australia will develop? And who are your favorites for the Six Nations Rugby Tournament? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.